Hi there, it's Gabby here from Confidence After Cancer and this week I've got a very special guest. I've got a lovely lady called Sam Palmer who's got many areas of interest to me and I hope for you as well. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about Sam before we get to speak to her because her background's really interesting and for me she touches on so many levels of things that I'm interested in and things that I think I need. So Sam Palmer is the creator and founder of Midlife Makeover an online community where women can access menopause, fitness and lifestyle support. Sam's career actually started in the NHS, wonderful NHS, as we all know and love it, where she qualified as a nurse, eventually becoming a sister in a neonatal intensive care unit. But becoming a mother led her to look for work that didn't involve night duty, but did involve her love of teaching. And so having qualified as a teacher, Sam left the NHS to work in further education. A desire to do things her way, and I can relate to that. <laughs> I'm not really a corporate employee. A desire to do things her way inspired Sam and a colleague to set, become their own boss and set up their own company delivering first aid training, both in the workplace and also to private individuals. Not content with one business, Sam turned her passion for running into something that would, unbeknown to her, go on to touch the lives of many thousands of women. So we'll come on to that. Oh, I've got a lump in my throat. <laughs> oh, bless you. <laughs> you forget, don't you? Forget the journey you've been on. And, and I think that's true for a lot of women. We're always thinking about the next thing. What's the next thing I want to do? What's the next thing? And you, then you, when you stop and reflect, where have you been? And now what have you, have you learned and what's, what's happened? So um, Sam has trained as a running coach, which is a bit of a scary thing for me, but I'm really inspired by it and set up a fitness club exclusively for women in Seven Oaks in Kent. In 2014, Sam was voted UK Coach of the Year by UK and has won many other local awards for her tireless work helping women. Very inspirational. Sam launched Midlife Makeover in 2014 and to date has supported thousands of women via an online platform to make simple, proven lifestyle changes her online programs include Move Over Menopause and Menopause Fitness Classes. And this is something that I talk about a lot is um, when I went through my cancer treatment, I was I went through menopause and it was a sort of, a you know, an afterthought and, and no attention was given to it and something that wasn't really talked about a lot. And I think that's uh, so many women are struggling with menopause. I know that. But coming back to Sam and her introduction, Sam is now post-menopause. Uh, she's still running and often found out walking with her dog or cooking up a healthy brownie with chickpeas and beans. <laughs> healthy brownie, who knew? And probably to go with her favourite drink of champagne. So a big warm welcome to Sam. So good to speak to you, Sam. You know, you're a lovely, inspirational person. I love the fact that you've had so many different strands to your career, journey, whatever you want to call it. So it's not just one thing. And I think that's more, it's more and more true for more people feel lost and feel, oh, I don't really fit in with the corporate world or I don't fit in with my old life anymore. And I'm finding that the work I do with women when they finish cancer treatment, they know they don't want to go back to their old lives, but they don't know what they want to do next. So for you, you're a shining example of you don't have to do what you've done before. You don't have to do what you've trained so hard to do if it's not filling you with joy. And so I call this episode The Joy of Movement, a little bit tongue in cheek for me. I exercise because I think I should exercise and I know it's good for me and I want a long and healthy life. But I've never really liked running or exercising. It's always been a bit of a chore and I'm sat down at a computer most of the day. How could I start to make changes? Oh, that's a lovely big question. <laughs> <laughs> help really... me, please, please help me. <laughs> I think... And please don't think that I'm coming from a place of uh, superiority here. But one of the things that we all need to recognise is that we get to exercise. Okay. We yeah. get to do it. Yeah, yeah. Get that. Because there are plenty of people who can't. Yeah. That's very people true. for whom, you know, you've been through a massive life change. I've got a friend going through a serious diagnosis at the moment. I've got a brother that was killed in a motorbike accident, which is why I became a running coach in the first place. You know, so many people would love to be able to say, I've got to do a workout this morning and they can't. So I think at midlife, my business is called Midlife Makeover. Not because I didn't want to have the word menopause in it, but we get to a stage in our lives where we chuck everything up in the air 
and look and see where it all lands and think, well, I don't like that and I don't like that and I don't like that. That can go, but that I love. Okay. Yeah. And those things I ought to love. So what can I do to change them to make them more lovable? And there's this um, phrase, which is slightly irritating, but it's so true that our brain believes what we tell it. Yeah. So if you stand um, yeah. in the mirror in the morning and you say, your tits are awful, <laughs> and your brain believes it, or your legs are fat, your brain believes it. And we, particularly as young girls at school, we're so hard on ourselves and we, mm. we become so used to the things that we tell ourselves. Um, you know, you're old, you've got stretch marks, you've got this. Like, we'd never say that to our best friend. We'd yeah. never say, look at the tits or whatever. <laughs> we just yeah. wouldn't do that. So I think that part of your question actually comes back to allowing yourself to be kind to yourself and rediscover what does make your tummy smile. And mm. I, I use that term on purpose because there are so many ways, Gabby, that I could encourage you to embrace, let's call it movement rather than exercise. Yeah. But you may have forgotten what actually even floats your boat, what turns you on. And so I often say to people, if you think about the things that you scroll through on Instagram, okay, so I get to the thing on Instagram and it's called doodles of Instagram and it's puppies in ball pools. <laughs> My tummy smiles. I love it. It really makes me giggle and laugh and makes me want more and more and more of it. Some people like kittens, some people like yeah. clothes, some people like jewelry, handbags. It doesn't matter what it is. But noticing, tuning into what makes you think, I like that. Mm -hmm. And then go through in your head a series of things. Is it sailing? Is it dancing? Is it hockey? Is it lacrosse? Would you like to go back and, and, and run? Or would you like, what would you like to do? Do you fancy doing yoga on a paddleboard? You know, there are a wealth of opportunities for different ways to move. The simplest and easiest for many is just to start with walking. Yeah, because okay. believe me, as a, as a coach, I can make your walking tough. I can make your walking sweaty. <laughs> I can make your walking relaxing. I, make, I can make your walking, this one simple thing, as tough or as easy as we want to make it. So if we start with something like that, that's the way to start, is to start being curious about what it is that you would like. Because I don't want to play netball. I don't, if, if netball or, or tennis was the equivalent of walking, I'd be saying, I'd be saying exactly the same as you. Well, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I can't say bloody <laughs> ball. Um, so we have to find the thing, don't we? I love that. And I love how you're talking about engaging your mind because I'm all into that as well about the, the, the way that we speak to ourselves. You know, and I speak to that. I speak about that a lot with my um, confidence after cancer ladies about loving yourself, the way that you speak to yourself. That's not the way you'd speak to a good friend. But we all do it. We all beat ourselves up. We all focus on the the not so good about us. And we forget about the, the lovely things that we can do. Like so I, I love that advice. Thank you. So, that's so good. And the walking thing as well. And I've kind of forgotten, I think during lockdown, me and my husband just started going for a walk every day, something we never did. And we noticed things about where we live that we'd never noticed before, because normally you're at work and you drive in and out and yeah. things pass you by. So, And it was a, it was almost like a meditation, if you like, and also a way for us to connect. Yeah. 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 So I think if you want a little bit of science behind what can Gabby do, the one thing that's been proven, 96% of people who do this, go on to then action it and that is plan ah right okay so yeah. we're all motivated or not by all the things <laughs> that we see telling us about movement or exercise people leaping around wearing crop tops and saying this is easy and do this do this <laughs> like, yeah we, we all see it but actually unless somebody says right gabby i want you to look down and look at your working week and then your non-working week where are the time slots that you're prepared to give for you to do something? And those time slots don't need to be an hour. They can be 10 minutes. It can be a movement snack. But where that. are the time Love slots that. where you'll do it? And once you've identified the time slots, then you can think, right, what am I going to do there? So let's say you're, you're people that you work with who work from home, all right? Mm -hmm. 
and they have a nine o'clock in the morning meeting or they have to go online or whatever nobody's actually going to probably go for a run at eight o'clock because you're going to get back you're going to be sweaty your hair sticking to your head <laughs> and you're not going to look very presentable at nine o'clock so you have to think quite you know tactically okay what actually works for me to do there or what would I change to the weekend where it doesn't matter what you look like yeah but planning is means that things are much more likely to happen absolutely I know that myself when I have I got into the routine of getting myself ready the night before because I'm not particularly a morning person and if I don't plan the night before before you know it the days run away with you and oh it's it's tea time already and I've not done what I wanted to do so for me getting my exercise clothes out the night before and just having them ready to go yeah that planning yeah is, is everything that's really yeah. good yeah I like that some really good advice there thank you the other thing I was going to touch on, you know, you said you're not all about menopause, but obviously a lot of women in midlife are going through menopause. So I was going to ask you, what do you think in particular women who are going through menopause, what should they be doing for their physical health? Eat broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I describe this life phase as a bit like you open your cupboards one day okay, and everything's falling out. You can't find your favorite jeans. You can't find your T-shirt. You think, right, I'm going to go and buy a new wardrobe. Okay. Okay. But actually, if you took everything out of your cupboard and you threw away the T-shirts you never liked and the jeans that never fitted or the crunchy underwear somebody bought you that's really uncomfortable, if you threw away all the bits that, what does that uh, cleaning woman say, no longer serve you? Oh, yeah, Marie Kondo. Yeah, I like her. Yeah, A bit of a, a, a sort out on your wardrobe you wouldn't actually need a new wardrobe because all the crap would have gone. Yeah. And that's what I help people do at this stage of their life. I help them look at not just their sleep, but their rest. Not just what they're eating, but when they're eating, how they're eating, and what range of food they're eating. What Mm -hmm. type of exercise they're doing. Are you actually doing too much? or you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. So I think that the first thing that we all need to start with is this sort of lifestyle stuff. And it doesn't happen overnight, Gabby. I think in honesty, to get from having that very first conversation to going through a process of, do I put myself to bed like a toddler? Do I turn down the lights? Do I turn off screens? Do I do all of those? And some people will do some things really well, but it's a real struggle for them to eat more plants or whatever. So in honesty, I would say it takes about six months to slowly put some of these habit changes into place. And it's only then that you look back and think, oh, wow, I actually feel better. Yeah. Yeah. How, How do I feel better just eating some seeds or you know just putting moisturizer on my legs when i'm on the toilet or whatever it is <laughs> yeah yeah why do i feel better and it's because you're looking at yourself as a whole the whole cupboard yeah love that i love that and that's again you know a lot of the work that you do the lot of work that i do it's not just about treating the symptom and treating one thing we're not just a part you know a part like when you have breast cancer and they just treat the tumor and that's great but actually there's everything going on in your life around that that needs yeah. to be addressed and yeah. you know the nhs is wonderful but it's not going to address that it's just going to deal with the, the crises and, and sadly most you know talking menopause specific most menopause doctors private or nhs and if you're looking to get an nhs one you're waiting a year and when you get there what have you got eight ten minutes so really what a doctor is going to try and do probably is give you something that is a quick fix yeah. because only a doctor can prescribe HRT. Anybody can prescribe broccoli. Broccoli comes up time and time again, in case you haven't noticed. Um, okay. But, you know, they are only going to do that which they can do. Now, if you see a private menopause doctor, you might have an hour, but they're not really going, going to go into the minutiae because they haven't got that time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we talked about that as well, about the physical health. But I'd imagine all the things that you're talking about, obviously, it's going to help with movement and things like that. But are there mental health benefits as well? Because I see so many people, you probably do as well, struggling with their mental health, you know, no matter what time of life they're at, but particularly in midlife as well. Um, And what are the mental health benefits of of working with you? 
I think it's quite difficult, isn't it? It's it's like when you all your necklaces are tangled up in the bottom of your jewelry box, and you're trying to pull one thing out, and <laughs> inevitably it doesn't work. Everything's all tangled yeah. up. Mental health, midlife, cancer, getting over from cancer, menopause, children growing up, parents getting older. We are in the perfect storm, and and mm-hmm. you know your situation has added yet another sort yeah. of storm into that mix. What is the cause? of our mental health challenges is really difficult to discern. But there are some things that you can do that whatever the cause are only going to help your mental health. And in fact, sleep, Mm -hmm. a diet um, that is a very Mediterranean diet, a very plant-based Mediterranean diet, direct links to your gut health direct thing so most serotonin produced in your stomach serotonin makes you feel happy if your gut is full of frozen pre-packed food that you haven't loved enough to treat yourself with then the knock-on effect can be your mental health you you know we can really change things there um I've forgotten your question because I still... <laughs> it's fine. But you just touched on something there, and maybe it's going off a little bit. You said there about treating yourself. <laughs> and I find it really interesting that people will say, oh, I'm going to treat myself to something that's just not going to make them healthy. I'm going to treat myself to a takeaway. Yeah. I'm going to treat myself to a, a bottle of yeah. wine or two. And, it, you know, you're treating yourself and loving yourself. Those things aren't what you need. Yeah. And I'm not saying, that, you know, I'm like you. I'm not saying... I never have a treat. Of course I do. Right. It's about mo- moderation and it's about loving yourself enough to think, well, I actually go- I'm going to stop eating processed foods every single day because yeah. that's not doing me any favours. Yeah. But I think, let's be honest, you know, the busy frazzled woman who's running her own business mm-hmm. or going to work and dealing with families and all of these things, it's not that she's unwilling to not use processed food, but nobody's told her how simple it is to do a few other things that are just, you know, just as quick, just as efficient, possibly just as cheap, but far more nutritionally benefic- beneficial. So yeah. women are not unwilling. They just haven't had those simple things put in front of them enough or at a time where they were ready to take that on board. Yeah. You know, again, yeah. if you think of social media, we're bombarded all the time with how to make a quinoa salad in two and a half minutes. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it has to land at exactly the right time and exactly the right way by exactly the right person mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Those changes. get that get that thank you so much so i was going to ask you if, i don't know if there is a best but are, are they the exercises that are the best for menopausal women or that's a brilliant it- question you've fed right into my passion project haven't you um yes when we are perimenopause menopause or postmenopause, there are three different types of exercise that are vital and Just like a Woolworths pick and mix, we need to have a little bit of all of them. Do you remember Woolworths pick and mix? I do remember, yeah. Such an exciting place. Purple quality street with a big nut in the middle of it. Um, We need a pick and mix of of all of them. So the first thing is anything that um, raises your heart rate. So that can be fast walking, it could be walking up a hill, it could be cycling, anything that makes you sweat. Having sex, if that's your heart rate raiser, you know, fill your boots and, and have it twice a week might be pushing it a bit might not but that's what we're we're doing with the cardio exercise and that's because our heart needs that work because it's no longer protected by estrogen i don't know if you know but if you think about heart attacks when women are fecund when we are still producing loads of hormones and we are still able to have babies men are far more likely to have heart attacks. We, we, we think of men as having heart attacks, don't we? But as yeah. soon as we hit the stage where our hormones have plummeted and, and they're down there, we are just as likely, if not more likely, than a man to have a heart attack. So actually protecting your heart by doing the kind of stuff that protects it with what you eat and how you move becomes really important. Don't sure. bore everybody, Sam, but that's why cardio is important. No, I think everyone wants to know this. I think, again, people get overwhelmed with it and just think, well, I'm at the age, like I do, I'm at the age now and I know I should be doing something, not quite sure what to do. So did you say you should be doing something that makes you sweat twice a week? About twice a week, yeah. Yeah. 20, 25 minutes is fine. You'll be ticking those boxes. Um, 
I've got a free download, actually, I could send to you after this, which has got this written down. So people could then think, okay, what do I do that makes me sweat? It could be gardening, pushing the wheelie bin up and down the garden. (laughs) You know, it doesn't matter as long as it's getting your heart rate up. The next thing that um, people need to do is some kind of restorative movement. So I'm sure you're aware we're constantly on alert. We've got Mm -hmm. notifications, we've got things going on. And actually, some kind of movement that calms you right down is really vital. So if somebody has already or always done yoga, they're going to say, yeah, great. That's it. That's lovely. I do that once or twice a week. Some types of Pilates are restorative. Some of them are definitely not. They're tough. Um, Tai Chi, it might be that um, swimming is very restorative for you. Walking can be really restorative. It doesn't matter. It's anything that makes you feel like your cup has been filled up by the time you finish it. Oh, how lovely. Yeah, I like that expression. Yeah, it's lovely. But I think the thing that most people try and ignore because they don't know how to do it or where to start is strength-based exercise. Mm -hmm. And as I said, your heart needs protection for the same reasons as your um, estrogen plummeting our bones and our muscles need protecting too because they decline, they wither away to nothing. Um, And unless we do something about that, the likelihood of us having knock-on effects as a result of that as we age is far greater. People have a fall. They have a fall in their 70s and 80s and maybe we're not there yet, but you can still fall over on your outstretched hand when you're skiing, when you're tripping on the leaves in the autumn, you can still break legs, but you know, we don't want any of that. When we were young, Gabby, we were a little bit like a Ferrari. We had a loads of engine all over our body just because of the way we moved. Sadly, now we're a bit more of a Skoda or a Lada. Skoda's quite nice, aren't they? But, you know, we're a tiny little Fiat 126. And unless you do something about your engine, your muscle, anything that you eat isn't used up working that muscle and you end up no. putting weight. So there's lots of reasons why the strength bit is so important because it really helps in so many ways but it's the bit that for most people is really quite scary yeah it is I think it is and I, I've done in the past thinking I have to go to a personal trainer I have to go to a gym I have to have somebody show me what you know gyms can be quite intimidating I think what well, they were for me yeah. you know it's fu- yeah full of muscle men or very attractive young women who were all in skimpy stuff and I was like I'm not really feeling falling into that I'm I'm a bit scared so my question is a personal question really I keep saying I'm 59 I'm actually 60 this month um and yeah I want to sort this out this is something I need to address in my life but is it too late for me to learn to love movement I had a lady who started with me four months ago she was 72 She had never done any strength exercise before. Her daughter, who's one of my clients, encouraged her to start. She has not looked back. It's never, ever too late. In fact, if you don't start focusing on that, you're likely to be leading yourself into more issues as you get older. You might not be able to change your own mattress on the the sheets on your bed because you won't be able to lift the mattress. This isn't about what do I look like in a bikini? This is about, can I either change my own bedding because the mattresses are flipping heavy? Can I get myself to the toilet? Can I lift my parents up off the floor if I get called over there because they've fallen? Can I bounce a grandchild up and down on my lap? You know, there's multiple reasons why it's so important if you haven't found the right person to find that person who can support you. Really important. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. Yeah, it's so true. It's it's true, isn't it? Yeah, there's so many reasons of, of just living, just everyday life. And we yeah. all want a long and happy and vibrant life is what everybody wants. Yeah. But um going back to you, Sam, and and you're like in your in my introduction to you, I said about all the different things that you do. And I know you're still doing a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to ask, because again, this this rings true for so many people, they're juggling, they're wearing many hats. So you're a busy woman, but how many businesses are you running at the minute? And what does an average day look like for you? Um, 
Midlife Makeover is my prime business. I do corporate events uh, where I go in and I leap around talking about juicy vaginas. Not quite like that, but I tr because I'm a nurse, I'm really comfortable with all those questions that people aren't happy to ask. And so when I go in and do corporate events, I go in as somebody who can actually talk about symptoms rather than talk about the profits that a company might make if they keep people in the workplace. So a very different uh, vibe to it. Part of that business is to have a permanent full-time online menopause fitness platform. So anybody can join at any time. Um, they normally start by doing a six-week trial period just to, to get the feel for it. Those classes are live. So if I'm teaching live, I'm there live and I'm talking about what's happened to me. And my mum went to live in Sainsbury's because she liked the clothes there because she's got Alzheimer's. And people say, don't you know, it's it's live. We're sharing. Yeah. But on demand too because people often want to do things when they want to do them and then I have my own clients um, either in a one-to-one -one setting or in my program Move Ever Menopause which is I guess the tidying out of that wardrobe. I so, love that analogy I really like that that relates to me so much because I know how you feel when you've done a tidying out of your wardrobe or cleaning the cupboard under the sink how good it feels afterwards and you can actually yeah. see what you need to see love that thank mm -hmm. you so when you're doing so many different things how do you manage to do them and do you ever get overwhelmed with all the different things that you're trying to do i don't get um overwhelmed i'm i'm i love what i do i love the people Tell i work with. I love talking to people like you i absolutely love it i get the fear gabby um and i'm i'm very honest and open with people the menopause world is now enormous and anybody and his dog can suddenly be a menopause expert. They're popping up over overnight in all sorts of places. And sometimes I do wonder what value I bring. Where, where's my value? And it's that that sometimes overwhelms me. And I have to take a step back and think, stay in your lane, Sam. The people that enjoy the way I teach, you know, the fact that I'm not as calm as a yoga teacher might be <laughs> I'm enthusiastic those people will be drawn to me and you know if you're not you're yeah. not I don't so I don't get overwhelmed but I do get sometimes fe a feeling of stuckness I think is my in my honest answer and I can relate to that because in the the, um, the cancer world, if you like, there are some, you know, beautiful Californian ladies with long blonde hair who are very polished. The yeah. opposite of me, if you like, you know, I'm a northern woman and I, I try to be honest and open and just share my experience. But you're right, the right people will come to me because they like that. They don't want this this person that they can't relate to. And yeah. unfortunately, it's a huge market. Same for you. Same for me. There's so many people that need help. And I think just being yourself and you come across as somebody who's very happy to be authentic, very happy to share what you're struggling with. Yeah. And yeah. that's great. And that's what people want. And I think people more and more now can see through the falseness of some people. This, you know, some people will put on a facade and pretend everything's wonderful in their lives and they mm -hmm. never have a problem. And look at me, aren't I amazing? And I'm living in this, I'm driving a Ferrari and I'm living in this beach house. People don't want that. They want something they can relate to. Somebody's living a life similar to them or the life that they would like the yeah. life that they could see themselves living and that's you know you talk about walking your dog and the things that you do and that's just wonderful because that's the life that we all want a happy healthy life so yeah I, I love that and so I've just got one more question for me really I mean you've given me so much information here I'm going to try and capture it all in the, the show I'm notes overwhelmed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we're recording this and we will you know because I usually turn my uh, podcast into a blog and I'll put some you know just headers underneath of what we've talked about I'll yeah. put the links in so people can get in touch with you so my last question really is just what is your top tip for anybody who wants to make some changes but they're not quite sure where to start Oh, good one. I think it's really important to take the time to think about all the things that are sort of on your metaphorical plate and work out who you can give them to. You know, when people are fundraising for a new village hall and you see that thermometer and you get the red line that goes up and up and up, doesn't it? Yeah. And that's how much you fundraise for. So I think as, as new young mums, for instance, or, or women, 
we have two thermometers. We have that home thermometer and then we have our working life. And at home, perhaps you start as a single woman, then you have a baby and it's your responsibility to feed the baby and to dress the baby and to take the baby to nursery or to get the nanny for the baby. And the baby grows up and, and okay, however committed your relationship is you still one of you still has the prime responsibility for being the organizer of life in the in the home as it yeah. as it happens buying presents paying bills perhaps taking kids to exams and flute practice and all of that crap so that responsibility thermometer if you like gets fuller and fuller and fuller and fuller over time and at the same time, you start as a young woman, your job, whether it's your own business or somebody else, and your responsibility goes up and you're responsible for more and more other people and more people come to you. And at no point when both of your thermometers are here, does anybody say, you've got a lot going on at the moment. <laughs> Can I take off your plate? Yeah. Mommy, shall I cook for you? Shall I do my own washing? Oh, you take a long weekend, you're tired. Nobody ever says, what about you? And so I think my first tip is that you make yourself a cup of tea, a cup of coffee or whatever, and you sit down and you write down all the things that are part of your day to day life. Yes, of course, I'll read Toby's thesis. What the hell are you saying yes to things like that for when actually you could quite easily say, I'm really sorry, I've got a lot on my mind at the moment. If Toby's got some specific questions about his thesis that I can answer face to face, I'll do it. We've become programmed to say yes to everything. This is part of the, the wardrobe, isn't it? Yeah, Actually yeah. working out who can help you do the things that you've got to do so that the things you've got to do make your tummy smile and that you're happy and you yeah. love doing them. So that's, I suppose, my biggest tip. The second one is to get outside before 12 o'clock every single day and get light into your eyes whether yeah. you have a cup of coffee sitting outside whether you sit by the window in the winter in the uk it's quite dark but literally yeah. just getting light into your eyes before midday has a massive effect on your circadian rhythms mm -hmm. and just how good you feel it's yeah. it's really really important yeah. and then drink two liters of water a day okay two liters of water a day is good for your brain it's good for your bladder the more you wee, the more you have to squat on the toilet. The more you squat, the more you work your glutes. The more fluid-filled we are, the better the balance of your hormones, the better your gut. I could go on and on and on. And yeah. that enables you to eat the broccoli as well. <laughs> really important. You've never asked me about broccoli. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's all of those things that I think are really important. And talk. Talk. Love it. Yeah. Talk. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So on the last note, so if people want to get in touch with you, what is the best way to do that? Um, I'm on LinkedIn as Sam Palmer Midlife Makeover. I'm on Instagram as Midlife Makeover. I'm on Facebook as Midlife Makeover, but I have a secret Facebook group. So if you find me on Facebook, you get taken into the secret Facebook group because not everybody wants to ask the sorts of questions okay. or find the sort of answers that I might give in a public Facebook page yeah that or yeah, my website right. <laughs> or my website yeah yeah and i'll put links to everything below this in the notes below this thank you so much sam it's been an absolute joy talking to you today because we talked all day and a lot of what you said resonated with me so much because there's things that i believe in but you've taught me a lot of new things as well i love the three aspects of the exercise that's really given me a lot of food for thought um it's been great talking to you thank you so much thank, thank you so, so much for having me it's been fantastic great stuff thank you take thank care you. Bye-bye, Dan. -bye.